Hey everyone, I'm Jesse Happy and you're watching Kalaka.in. It's been three years since I got my first 3D printer, the Prusa i3 from Sun Hoki. I later built this cabinet which I have linked in the description. Anyway, over the years I have picked up techniques to get amazing 3D prints right out of the build plate. And in this video, I will share you five points to get the best 3D prints. So subscribe to this channel and make sure to press the bell icon to get notified. The first point is power, but we overlook this most of the time and this one is super important. 3D printers like Reality Ender 3 and Anycubic i3 Mega come with power resume feature. While this is a good advancement, not all the 3D printers have this feature. So what do you do when you have some old models? A wise idea will be to invest in a good UPS or inverter. I have a 150AH 12V battery powering up these printers. This lasts about 4 hours and can power up to 2 to 3 3D printers. But recently I found out that printers like Tivo Tornado and the Ender 3 consume more than 250 watts of power. An 875AH inverter cannot power them. You need two 150AH batteries in series to give 24 volts to power this inverter. I certainly do not want to be in a situation where I print in almost 98% and the power fluctuates for even a second. Even that can stop your prints. So check the 3D printer power ratings and add a suitable inverter. The second point that many of us face is bed adhesion. Earlier it used to be just PLA or ABS filaments. Now filament types like PETG, nylon and TPU are widely used. Glue stick and hairspray worked out well for certain time but over the time a build up on the surface was done and you had to clean it. I did not want to do something like that. Then surfaces like the build tag came along. These have a rough surface coating. The parts stick well to it. The problem is that they stick way too well, especially the brim additions. So after testing many surfaces, I've started using the ultra base for most of my printers. Right now I have three 3D printers with this surface and I have ordered one more for the Creality Ender 3 which I just unboxed a week ago. The Ultra Base has a smooth coating which leaves a great finish at the bottom of your 3D printers. And when it is hot, the part sticks really well to it. And when it is cooled down, you just need to push it a little bit and the parts come out very easily. Occasionally, you just need to clean the surface with some rubbing alcohol or use a cleaning thinner to just get the dust off. So it's easy maintenance and absolutely super bed addition. Ultra Base gives me 100% results every time, which is most important to me. For ABS, I've used the slurry technique. This has worked great for me and I will continue to do that. For all the rest of the filaments, Ultra Base works just fine. Since it usually comes in 4mm glass sheet, the first setting might take some bed leveling. For a good perfect addition, the distance between the nozzle and the plate should be just invisible but still be there. That's why I use this 130 GSM art sheet. Any pamphlet is of this thickness. Just slide it under the nozzle and tighten the bed plate until there is some friction when you try to move the sheet. That should do it. The third are the filaments we use. Make sure you buy it from a reputable company. Just don't buy because you get it in bulk or it's cheap. The pellets from which the filaments are manufactured should be virgin. The filaments should maintain a uniform thickness all around for a smooth extrusion. With PLA, you must have seen at times when they break overnight. This could be because the filament is old or has absorbed moisture. These filaments are from solid space and ever since I changed to them, they have been really amazing. There are no stringings, the extrusion is even and the surface is absolutely smooth. The melting point for PLA is around 200 degrees and for ABS it's around 230 degrees. At this temperature the layer addition is great and the lines are almost invisible. These parts are straight from the bed with no post processing at all and many of my clients love this finish. The spools are also reusable. You can save up to rupees 200 if you buy spoolless filaments and reload it. That's a great way to reduce and reuse. Also another important point is say if you need to print different color items in different sizes. Don't waste by buying all the colors. Buy just one filament and spray paint to change the colors. This is cost effective and also when you buy more filaments and use them, there is a chance that you just might leave it outside there and that will give you bad quality prints later. So buy good 3D printing filaments, find ways to reduce and reuse and use your money very effectively by painting the parts. The fourth point is clogging. Most of the time this is not the printer's fault but ours. Clogging of the nozzle can happen if the filament is dusty or the temperature is just not right. Sometimes it could also happen because of insufficient lubrication inside the PTFE tube. These tubes when they are new are soft and allow easy flow of the filaments. But when you are printing more with the PLA, it kind of creates a rough surface. I always use a sponge 
to push through the filament and then lubricate it with this oil. It helps in two ways. It can clean the dust off and then lubricate the filament as well. This is not your regular oil. It is very thin and does not burn with heat. Only a drop is sufficient for half the roll and this does not also affect the print. In fact, it has greatly improved the under extrusions problems. This oil works with all types of filaments. Changing PTFE tube once in a while will also help. Make sure all the bolts are tightened and the X and Y axis belts are stiff. If all these steps are carried out properly, then you can say that the printer is ready for printing. Now that the machine is ready to make your imaginations come true, let's look at the software that makes it happen. Cura is a free software and it has helped me get into the 3D printing world. But Simplify 3D has upped my game by a lot. Yes, it is paid, but I say it is all worth it. Both the softwares have almost the same amount of customization, but Simplify 3D is very easy to use. There are various profiles available on the net, which is shared by a huge 3D printing community. I will post my settings below in the description. Mostly, I make sure that nozzle diameter, the layer width, the layer height, the retraction are all set properly. This includes right temperature for the right filament. The custom script section in Simplify 3D is very useful. For example, in my settings, before the printer starts, the nozzle extrudes a thin layer on the side of the build plate so that it is primed and ready. Then after the print, it pushes the bed to the front so that I can easily pick the part off. These kind of subtle things add a huge advantage in the software. So power supply, bed surface, filaments, nozzle and software. This might seem too much at first, but as you print more and more, it becomes a habit. It. Except lubrication of the filament, most of the other things are just one time setup. If you have any tips that can help other people, then please put them in the comments. I will make a separate video discussing about different filaments and what settings I use. If you love this video, then press the like button to let us know. Follow me on Instagram to see what I'm working on right now. I will see you in another project or with another tip video. Until next time, happy learning.